Welcome to the Know Your Legacy podcast. I'm your host, Vipul Basania, and today's guest is Simonetta Lean. Simonetta is a social entrepreneur, author, and fashion icon. She's also the founder of the Wish Wall Foundation, which, believe it or not, makes human wishes come true that socially uplift everyone in societies. And an example of that is renaming a street in the name of a loved one for someone that was lost by a woman in uh, Philadelphia. So she's doing some really important work and puts passion behind everything she does. That's why she's been named top 100 influencer, mentioned in Forbes, Huffington Post, you name it, she, she's been there. So Simonetta, thank you so much for, for being here thank today. Thank you. Thank you for your warm introduction. <laughs> no, no, no problem. You deserve it. You've done a lot of good work. So um, I'm going to jump straight into it. I know you obviously came over to the US not too long ago yes. and started the wish wall, etc. But before that, I'm interested in what happened up to that point. What was life like in Italy? Oh, good question. I mean, it was um, maybe easier. I mean, on one hand, it was uh, tougher and in one other easier i'll explain you why tougher because the i mean i'm pretty sure that a lot of people know that you know europe is going through a difficult uh, phase in italy especially we were facing and we're still facing a lot of uh, you know economical crisis so that was tough and not nice it's not nice to see your place where you grew up you know not going well and especially you really feel it uh, talking with you know, everyday people, people were unhappy, people were, you know, I was living in Milan with my husband and, uh, you know, just uh, talking with the people in the, you know, just normal conversation. It was just, uh, you know, things that were not going very well. And so that was not nice. Um, are you see my husband right yeah. there? <laughs> <laughs> so you felt, so you, so you almost felt like it was time for a change? Yes. Yeah, so um, actually we, we were just, um, you know, together for actually a long time and because he's American and um, he was living with me for, I don't know, I think 10 years in Italy. And trust me, we loved it. I mean, Italy, it's an amazing place. Uh, we were doing, you know, really great life. Uh, life wasn't costing that much. We were just enjoying, but then things started to get changed and, you know, we just said, oh, what are we doing? So of course he's from America. He has his family over here and we were, you know, talking about and talking about it's not easy, you know, because it, it means to start all over again, uh, start all over again with, um, you know, your job and uh, with your friendships, not having your family, especially. Yes. I mean, of course we have his family, which is very, very, uh, you know, good to have. They're not that close though. So uh, we don't, you know, I mean, we see each other, but not that often, but of course my entire family, is in Italy. So I just, um, you know, this side, I said, let's just do it and uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah. And, um, and we just, um, actually everything was, um, a little bit of coincidence and a little bit of, um, I don't know, meant to be, I would say, because, uh, we used to come to the U S just to visit my, my in-laws, you know, pretty much every summer. And that summer, my dad, um, he was missing actually from the States for a long time. And he said, let me just come and visit. And he landed in Philadelphia and we went to, you know, pick him up. Uh, usually, you know, he used to, uh, we used to land in Newark or New York. Uh, but that time he said, okay, let's just, you know, go to Philadelphia. We said, okay, it's fine. And because it was in Philadelphia, then, you know, we had some time to just, uh, you know, uh, go with him and, uh, we said, let's just take a look at the city. And he actually was the one say, hey, I love this city. This city is so cool, full of young people, because of course there, there are a lot of university, right? And so he was very inspired. And we said, okay, let's just, you know, go back and take a look at the city a little bit better. And that's how, you know, it all started. And uh, one day we just decided to change everything. <laughs> so actually it was my dad in a way that, uh, pushed us and also that I think it's uh, quite interesting because you would never think you know uh, about a parent that will tell you know his daughter go and that was very um, I mean unselfish of him and of course he suffers you know he misses me but he tells me all the time he comes and visits me and my mom does as well both of them of course you know again I am an only child so they miss me but they're like you, I know we know that uh, you know, you're just doing a much better life. And also you can, I don't know, maybe 
contribute to society better because again um, I don't want to feel you know that I abandoned my country I did not abandon my country I just uh, um, I don't know I really tried to go to a place that was uh, more I don't know um, acceptance um, that have more acceptance that have more uh, possibilities for us and for our future and um, I mean Definitely, we'll see. I don't know in the future. Right now, I'm very, very happy here. So if they ask me, you know, would you go back to Italy? I would say just to visit, just to visit. <laughs> but my home is Philadelphia now. So that's, you know, when we actually, again, decided to um, change our lives completely. My father, as I told you, pushed us and said, you know, that city is amazing. Just go for it. And then anyhow, we, we got, uh, again, in one, in one, in one hand, lucky and on the other um i don't know maybe it was meant to be because um we met uh now now he's a friend of ours and he's a realtor and he called us up one night and he told us if we were ready to change our lives and um we were a little bit of course you know scared but you know uh very very excited at the same time and we said what do you mean and he said, I, I found the house of the dreams. <laughs> and of course, you know, it required a lot of work. It wasn't easy. Everything I do in my life, it's never, you know, ready. <laughs> and that is always what I, you know, teach people. Maybe people see me and they think, oh, you know, she's doing a lot of things. It's hard. You got to work for it. it. No one gives you anything. But I mean, how amazing is that? I mean, I, I, I am the one that, you know, um, in my house that um i mean me and my husband he's very very handy so he did a lot of work uh, you know with the electricity and plumbing and everything and i mean it's very rewarding you know definitely of course we also hire some people but we did the majority of the stuff and i keep on you know doing a lot of the things so <laughs> i don't show that on social media because that it's my private i like to maintain you know certain private moments but for instance i love to go in my garden and uh, just cut the grass and uh, you know <laughs> cut some flowers and do my you know a gardening <laughs> I, i'm very very lucky i mean i live uh, 10 minutes far from center city of philadelphia which is uh one of the biggest uh city in, in in america but yet i am in the middle of the nature and i love that i really you know need to look outside and see birds and see nature that it's me <laughs> yeah you're right you said you've got you definitely definitely have a lot going on you know from social media you know obviously we've been speaking for a while on there and yes you're, you're always doing something so i was interested to know obviously i asked you about italy because i wanted to see did that life actually start for you back then because i know you had some success in italy already yes. before you came to the u.s so talk to us yes. a little bit about that Yes. So actually, of course, it started there. I was pretty established there. I actually left in a moment that, again, from outside, people, they might know and they might think, is she crazy? Because I was working for Vanity Fair. I just got my book published by one of the biggest publishing houses. I was doing a big radio show as a host. Um, I mean, from outside, everything seemed very, very uh, nice. But again, the economy wasn't, you know, really working, so it was hard. And then, I don't know, it was just, uh, you know, when your soul is pushing you. I mean, America, in a way, is the center of a lot of things. And so, you know, I always make the joke, I was still tweeting in Italian, right? Which is a beautiful language, but of course, you know, English is another thing. Everyone can understand English. <laughs> and so, the minute that I, you know, came to the United States of America, I had that possibility right to start and use <laughs> the English language and so of course even that it's I mean people might don't understand how you know that opens doors and especially also you know social media are algorithms and then of course the algorithm in America opens doors to a you know a huge um audience uh, I got maybe lucky on the other hand I work very hard. It's actually still very funny to me. I have people every day, they ask me, can I ask you for something? I'm like, yes, tell me. But is it really you behind your social media? Because you have to tell me, how do you do all those things? I'm like, yes, I am. 
how could, how is it possible you always reply to me? How is it possible you always reply to everyone? I can't, I'm like, trust me, I sleep, I don't know, a couple of hours a night. <laughs> I never stop, but I enjoy it, you know, I mean, definitely it is, uh, of course, my occupation, it's my job, but it's my passion, you know, I really, I met so many amazing people on social media, see, we're doing this thanks to Instagram, so thank you, Instagram. <laughs> yeah, exactly, no, it definitely has been a platform that's allowed me to connect with people like you, for sure, so it's just about how you use it, it's just the perspective you have, you can either use it to just scroll through, you know, mindless pictures of, of drunk nights that you've had with your friends, or absolutely. Or or you can look at people who are doing amazing things around the world, like yourself. You yeah. Know? So yeah. that that brings me on to um, you know what you started in the U.S., which was the Wish Wall. You started that in Philadelphia, where you are. Yes, absolutely. Was born there, and it's 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 a crazy concept. So t t for people that don't know what it is, explain a little about a little bit about what it is, and then uh -huh. how you actually came up with the idea. Yes. So. In a way, it started in Italy when I got published with my, uh, as I told you, my first novel. Um, it's a, it's a dream. It's it's a book about the power of dreams. So I was always interested. So my mother, uh, you have to know, she's a psychotherapist. My father is a medical doctor. They always gave me, you know, that um, sense of. Uh, uh, opening your heart to others, but you know, really enjoying it, really seeing that you can do something. They always told me you are never too small to think that you are one person and you cannot change things. So that is, you know, my uh, background. So my my book, it's a little bit part of my story, and then of course, you know, it became a, a a novel. And in a way, I always say that the character of that book, uh, her name is Sophia. She taught me a lot because she started as me and then she became another thing. And she gave me the inspiration um, because in, in the book, actually, I, I, I got inspiration um, when I was in India. I, I just uh, uh, was, you know, doing a trip with some friends and I saw they have this um, cultural, I would say, um, thing. They hang their wishes on two trees. And so they close them, they put them there. And I was asking, I said, you know, I mean, of course, I imagine what it was, but I asked, you know, what was the sense of it? And, you know, the sense of it, it's way deeper than, you know, the just gestures, really, you know, the idea of writing it down, have a, you know, really an idea that, you know, you give it to the universe, you really put it out there. And I found that a very fascinating concept. So when I uh, actually went back to Italy at that time, I tried because my first degree is in fine art. So uh, I'm also a painter, so I'm an artist. And so I said, why don't we replicate the idea of the tree, you know, the, the wish tree? The problem is that, of course, uh, uh, you live in a city, and so they start to say something very right, like, hey, what about if, you know, it rains, all the wishes will be, you know, destroyed. In India, they just don't care, you know, it's part of the culture. But, you know, in the Western society, those were the problems. And when we moved to the U.S., I have to say that America inspired me a lot. Um, America has a lot of uh, charitable um, heart, uh, you know, um, and, and that actually gave me that extra strength. So uh, through a friend of mine, uh, we went and we had a, a meeting with an amazing councilman. His name is uh, Mark Squilla, Councilman Mark Squilla. He's Italian-American. So as Italian, you know, he opened uh, his doors for me and just to listen to me. And I told him about, you know, this uh, wish tree. But at that point, because again, I'm a city girl, I already had the idea on how to transform that in a mural. Uh, because I said that, you know, it's something that you can easily uh, replicate in, in a city. And he loved it. In the meantime, uh, that concept of, again, putting the wishes out there uh, became a blog. At the beginning, it was a blog. So I actually had to study a lot, a system that will allow people to actually put their own wishes and inspiring stories out there. Um, and, you know, because usually whenever you go to blogs, you can just put your comment, you know, underneath the the post that you see. Instead, I said, no, 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 I want people to put their own stories and to, you know, being published. So it was a lot of coding, thinking, talking with people. It was a long process, but at the end, you know, the blog was up and it was the wish wall. At that point, again, when I moved to the US, like we were talking before, algorithm, they opened a lot of doors. I started to receive so many wishes that I was like, what is this? <laughs> what am I doing now? And so, 
At that point, again, I was talking with a councilman and we had the idea of doing an event in Philadelphia. To do that, we needed you know, to be established, to have a foundation. And so that's actually really how it started. We said, you know, from a blog, well, it becomes a foundation. So we were even there, you know, when things are meant to be, we petitioned for a 501c3, which is, you know, the legal um, aspect for, you know, creating a foundation. And actually we got in two months, usually, you know, People, that's what the lawyer was saying. And even they, they, you know, they had to wait for years. So we got in two months. So it was, you know, kind of a sign to me. And, um, and we were able to do the first event in Philadelphia when actually Pope Francis came to the city. That was very, you know, um, I don't know. My heart was just happy. Definitely, of course, people uh, were already all because they were there you know to listen to Pope Francis um, and so they were opening to you know really a little bit thinking about others and so a lot of people ask me you know what kind of wishes do you have and I always say it really depends the majority are very inspiring and inspirational I would say uh, actually a lot of people think that I might get oh I want a car or I want to do this or I want to do that actually the majority are totally the opposite the majority are really they bring up social issues you know they talk about it. and that's why it's so interesting to go and reread the wish wall because you'll see I don't know people talking about schools problems drug problems veterans problems cancer you know everything that comes that there that it is in society and that's why I was very interested I said let's you know study or see the world through their dreams you know it's very interesting it's another way to study the world and see what's going on and then of course some of them are also a little bit more concrete and one of those was uh the one of that mother mother that lost her daughter in a hit and run accident and uh, she just um of course she wanted to find the killer and that was a huge thing that you know at that at that time i i thought that you know only god could you know really help us and on the other hand she wanted to uh, find a way so that the daughter will be not you know the, the, the city will not forget the daughter and so for that part i found that a little bit more human <laughs> and i said maybe i can do something and so i went and i spoke you know with my friend uh, Councilman Marsquilla and I proposed the idea of renaming a street. I still remember it was September when we did the wish well. Her daughter was killed in December 23rd and so imagine uh, that was actually would have been the very first Christmas that they would have uh, spent without her and so I said we have to rename the street before that. They started laughing. <laughs> they said you have no idea. This is September. You're talking in two months. This is Philadelphia. Forget about it. I said, no, you don't understand. <laughs> we have to do this. And they saw that I was very serious. And I did not give up until, you know, the day that actually was December 23rd and the sign was up. And, you know, it's still the, the you know, the, the mother that put up the wish, all their family, they were like, how did you do this? You are not even from this country. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> when things have to happen, they have to happen. And then, of course, I did not give up. Um, I Again, I received uh, uh, total um, help from the city and also AAA and Clear Channel. They all decided to... Um, uh, you know, come together, put a bigger reward because even there, you know, many times I'm not saying that it's easy to grant wishes. It's always, you know, complicated, but sometimes you just have to, you know, think a little bit more. I said, how much is the reward? And they said $2,000. I said, who's going to talk for $2,000? <laughs> and so we were talking and I, you know, all together come up with $15,000. I said, well, that might seem a little bit more interesting for people. And uh, then we put up a big billboard actually where she unfortunately uh, got killed. And um, it was even there a little bit uh, mystic because exactly one year after uh, the wish wall, the, uh, the mother, her name is Anna, she called me up and she said, actually, you know, this morning, it's a miracle. They, they came, they knocked on my door and they said that they got him. So someone <laughs> talked <laughs> it's uh, it's anonymous of course we don't know the name but they they got the money so uh and actually he uh, uh, he confessed he confessed that was him and he just ran away got scared unfortunately he had a lot of other stuff so he's in jail and so that was you know pretty <laughs> 
rewarding. Also, you know, for me as a human being, I'm like, yeah, this shows that, I mean, justice can be served, definitely. You know, maybe it doesn't come right away because I understand a lot of people, they feel, you know, that there's a lot of, you know, injustice things in this world. True. I'm not saying it's not true. But this story shows you that things can be done, you know, not saying that it's easy, but they can totally be done. And then again, he's yeah. in jail. So, you know, it's a little bit of a closure uh, for it that is. time. Yeah, definitely. And it's, it's amazing what you've done because you possibly couldn't have known all the steps that it took to recreate a name of a road and to catch the killer. You know, it's just intentions that you set and then you thought, yes. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do it. So it's an important lesson for people to take away to, to actually set a goal in mind, no matter how big it is, because it, it doesn't seem like you were scared or shied away by the fact that this dream was so big for that woman, you know, um, and Absolutely. for anyone, you know, to go out and rename a road. It's like, well, it's me against the community or, or it was the even funny How because yeah. the crime commission at the end they were calling me saying hey can we work together in some cases <laughs> like no i'm not a cop i have no idea i don't know how this worked out <laughs> but you uh, know again that was uh but but like you're saying you know it shows that definitely it is possible it's not that i was an expert in doing that i did not even know the laws you know of america i did not know a lot of things again at that time i think that actually so that was september 2015 we moved to this country it was january 2015 and to this house in philadelphia because of course like i told you we were fixing it for a long time it was only two months so i had no clue <laughs> but you know a miracle happened definitely <laughs> yeah that's 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 amazing how it all fell together i'm still i'm still um thinking about it and i can't process it because it's, it's just me too so trust weird. me <laughs> <laughs> after years every time i say this i'm like really how did, how did that possible? i know let me let me ask you this. So obviously you grant wishes for other people and for, for everyone in yeah. society who's trying to make something happen. What's your wish? <laughs> so I have many. The, I mean, the big one is for my career, meaning that, of course, definitely, you know, like you're saying, I'm busy, busy. I'm doing a lot of a lot of things and uh, a lot of things, very good things are happening. So I feel, I always say, I kind of feel that I've done, imagine if a stairs is like done by 10 steps, I'm at the eight. So I'm almost there. I'm missing those two, you know, little stairs to really, you know, fulfill uh, where I want to uh, get. Because I'm, I'm, I'm definitely very ambitious, definitely. But I always say to people, you have to, why not? I mean, we are all born with true and amazing potential. So why not? Why you don't want to do the, the entire stairs? I'm telling you, it's easy. It's not easy. I mean, the stairs, it's, you know, the well, steps are wide. So definitely. But, hey, I did it. And I always say it with a lot of pride. I am really, I'm coming with from a normal family. I'm not a daughter of someone or, you know, my, my husband is a normal guy. I just work hard. And so it's possible. And that it's, you know, really my message. I want to say definitely, of course, you have to find your core, you know, what is that it's unique about you and also don't give up. It seems, you know, <laughs> sometimes easy to say, but trust me, that's the key. The difference between who makes it and who doesn't is really that little, you know, uh, feeling in I'm giving up or I keep on going because I, I felt too every day I have, you know, those moments like, Oh, this did not go through, but then the other thing go through, you know, you always have to notice a little, you know, a little <laughs> thing going on every day. Yeah. And also another thing <laughs> that I actually have been learning very well lately is to learn how to rest not to give up because sometimes again our mind gets busy our body gets tired and you're like oh i can't take it anymore so rest it's totally fine to rest you know even on social media i always say so personal this is me personally i i, I get uh, anxiety from people that they post five times in a day it's like no don't do that <laughs> whatever i mean you also have to have a life please enjoy with your husband with your wife with your children with your friends no don't do that 
it gives me anxiety. So you can just totally find a balance, you know, between your life. But on the other hand, of course, social media, it is your life as well. It is part of your family. So I wish you really, my biggest wish is that you'll find that family into social media. So you'll be happy to go back. You know, you don't have to feel forced. You know, mm. on the other hand, maybe you'll have that day that you feel a little bit forced. It's like, okay, but go back because you know that you'll have your family there. You'll have your tribe They'll be there to support you, right? So find that balance between, you know, again, of course, being there, you know, maybe this is, of course, my experience. I'll make you an example. For instance, with Twitter. I also love my Twitter. And uh, actually, I started first with Twitter and then with Instagram. Um, before I used to post on Twitter, I would say four times, um, um, three, four times a, a week, something like that. And I build my tribe. So I'm not saying to you, you know, you have to be consistent though. Also know that, you know, it's like whenever you want to do friends, right? I mean, you have to show them, but then after a while, they'll know you and they'll also learn to respect your time. So, you know, slowly I, you know, now I think I tweet a couple of times a week, but, you know, but, but, but I always retweet the other stuff of people. I'm always there, you know, uh, checking what they're doing, put in a comment, you know, uh, liking their stuff. Uh, that is another way, of course, on being there to show love, right? But again, I'm not there constantly. Oh my goodness, I have to be on social media. I, I, I'll be there to support. Also, another thing, you know, they'll say, yeah, you have to post every day. Okay, true. Again, to me, every day is not really necessary. I would say four times a week, you know, if I have to give my tip. But what about, you know, spend a little bit more time for others? So instead of thinking about you posting, going underneath, you know, other people's posts and tell them what you think about them, support them, you know, that it's very important because that creates, you know, true relationships. The same way, you know, that we too started to, to talk together because we support each other and then, you know, other things can start. I mean, social media is just an extension of your life, right? So treat it that way. Yeah, definitely. A lot of good tips you just gave there. I think it's all about balance and just keeping it in perspective, isn't it? Not letting a, an extreme take over your life. And it seems like you're doing that really well, even though you have a really hectic li lifestyle. So, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's been, it's been amazing having you on. Let me just wrap up with the last few questions then. Uh, yes. And yeah, I'll be interested to see what you have to say. So the first one being, if you were to, with everything you've learned now, it obviously seems like you've come a really long way. If you were to tell your 18 year old Sim anything, what would you tell her? Hmm. Oh my goodness. First of all, I will hug him or hug her so strongly because, you know, I know, I remember, I mean, 18 years old, it seems yesterday to me. And I remember I was like, oh, you know what I'm going to do with life. Oh, you know, so I will hug him or hug her and to kind of give him or give her a grounding. So I will tell him, ground yourself, you know, Take a moment. Don't waste this time. I mean, 18 years old, it's amazing. You can definitely, you know, decide where you're going in life. Don't waste it for, you know, stupidity. I mean, I'm not saying, I mean, I'm saying enjoy. Definitely, you know, go out with your friends. But think that this is really the roots of your life. So be grounded. Really think what you're doing. And then definitely study you know, study, whatever, if it is university, if it is, you know, another course, if it is hey, today online, you can find so much stuff, study, read, get interested, get questions, uh, question stuff, you know, open your mind. Uh, if you're good in, I don't know, a painting, good. Start reading about cooking. I don't know, something else, you know, don't ever get bored with life. There are so many things, you know, that you can learn. And even if you're not doing exactly what you think that you should do right now, always keep that intention and think that in this very moment, you might learn a lesson from what you're doing for your bigger plan. So to me, when they tell you, hey, think about a plan B because the plan A, blah, blah, blah. No, no, no. The plan A, that's your plan. You're going to do it. I'm not telling you that you're going to do it in a, in a month. Maybe it will take you some years. So definitely imagine that that is the plan A and you have a focus and you're going to get there. No question asked. Of course, the only thing is that it's not like that. It's a little bit like that. So, you know, in the meantime, maybe you'll do a trip. Maybe you'll do 
another job for a little bit just to put some money away hey that's fine it's totally fine but always you know keep that you know uh dream there and even there while you're doing you know like that you might notice that your dream might even slightly change because of course you are growing but that doesn't mean that the final goal is changing of course but you know you are growing and so you might think more interesting going to be a little bit more like that than like that right than when you started so even that i will tell him or tell her um to be open even to see you know different uh positions because i remember i mean when i was 18 i thought i knew it all <laughs> and i did not know anything <laughs> and i still don't know a lot of stuff so you know stay humble but in a true way i'm not saying you know, just to stay really humble in a way that hey you there's a lot that you can learn it's so cool you can really you know be out there and learn and also use social media i mean if you are out there, you're 18, you definitely love social media. Use it to, you know, create friendship, to create uh, alliances, um, you know, to create uh, projects. Uh, why not? I mean, that's a pretty much free tool, right? Use it <laughs> that way to build your future. Yeah, that's that's really good advice. And that last bit that you said, that's exactly how I've been using Instagram. And that's why we managed to, you know, bump, bump into each other on Instagram. Yeah, that, that's how I managed to build so many amazing guests, uh, relationship with guests to come on, come on to the show. So um, the second question then is, yes. if you were to write anything on a piece of paper that was then put in a time capsule for generations from now to read, and you could just write one sentence or just a, a short paragraph, what would you write? Oh my goodness. The, only, the, the first thing that came out of my heart is decide to be happy because happiness, it's definitely a decision. You can have so many things that go wrong, but you decide to master your mind and be happy. No one has to steal your happiness. There's so much good out there. So decide to be happy forever. It. Yeah, no, I love it because it is, it is a choice, you know, it's a perspective it shift and it, you can see the positive or the negative in, in anything, in any situation. So it's just tra about training ourselves to see the good. Absolutely. And do. then again, it's like, why do I have, yes, of course, there are many things out there that can bother you from your personal life to other things that can go wrong, society, whatever, but nothing has to steal your own you know happiness your own um you know we we came to planet earth to be happy you know even in in the worst scenarios i mean we can transform a lot of things i hope everything sometimes is not everything but it's definitely a lot of things we can transform them so don't get caught in that moment that oh you know everything is it's not working it will work out and i say this well i'm saying it to you, to myself as well because definitely of course everyone have their moments don't you think that don't think that i you know I, i'm i'm perfect or no 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 i have my days too that i'm like Ugh, this doesn't work but i decided to do something with my mind and i and i see my thoughts that's the difference so i want you to do whatever you want to do a spiritual growing, a philosophical growing, reading books, um, going to seminars, learn from people, uh, have um, a mentor, someone that you can relate when you are in those moments. And that's the difference. Again, I can go low too, but I can, I, I, I've learned how to recognize that low and bring it up. And there are so many, you know, ways, uh, again, you know, whenever you go there, take that book that can help you right away or put that music that can change uh, your attitude. Uh, I mean, we have something that is pretty amazing inside here. Let's use it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're right. No, definitely. It's powerful when you start to study and start to realize and become conscious of what's actually going on in there, because then you can control it and then change the direction of your day and then your week and then your life, basically, you know, yes. the more you practice it. So really good advice so the the final question then for, yes. for from me is what's the legacy you want to leave behind in the world <sighs> so i get chills 
when I see people that tells me, your work is really inspiring me, you know, that I've started to do this or that because, you know, I saw that you did it and I feel that I can do it too. That is my legacy. The, the idea of, uh, um, again, never giving up. And that's why also that it's a, a big um, push for me, you know, whenever, because I know that there are a lot of people that I can inspire and, uh, and, they, and, they, and they can inspire um, as well, right? So a lot of people that thought they couldn't inspire, now they understand that they instead they can inspire because they got inspired by me. So I definitely want to see, um, when we say a better world, I mean, to me, it's very possible. Learn, you know, starting from little things. You don't need to think to huge things, right? It, again, we have, for instance, we have social media. Why don't we all start to use it with that sense of empowering other people, you know? In everything you do, I mean, if you do fashion, if you do cooking, if you do whatever, you can always find a way to be inspiring, you know, to, to uh, give that example, you know, to be that example. So definitely um, my legacy is that I was able to uh, give an example and see a lot of people that uh, don't give up and they will, you know, really try to do something way better <laughs> because we can definitely do much better in planet earth definitely i love it and it's, it's an amazing idea and i think you're definitely on the way to achieving that with everything you're doing now there's so many people including me who have been inspired by what you've done so far and uh, everything that you're i'm surely you know what you're going to be doing as well I, i'm sure so thank you so much for being here and definitely wasn't enough time we need to do part two <laughs> at some point yes. uh, we'll definitely do that but yeah in the meantime i wish you all the best and i look forward to uh, having thank you, you again. thank you so much it was really appreciated